Dear friends, today we are going to talk about pathophysiology of liver and to start with this we should first very briefly cover uh, some physiological and anatomical considerations. Uh, hopefully you remember this very large and important organ with its accompanying structures I mean gallbladder, uh, very close to this organ spleen and we will see disorders when spleen is connected with it at least uh, by vessels but not only that pancreas, duodenum etc. Uh, we should also keep in mind that uh, this organ creates quite unique system of blood supply in our body that is uh, portal blood flow and portal circulation which is designed in order to take whole blood from all the digestive system organs uh, to bring it to the liver and all, only after passing through the liver cells these substances are allowed to circulate in our body and sometimes we'll see later if we have bypass from portal system to cable system we uh, have disorders uh, including that as we'll see later hepatic encephalopathy and even coma so it is very important that the portal system covers all these organs uh, and it's also important to remember intra organ uh, structure of an organization of structure of the liver including that of lobule system and acinar system. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that within the liver we have three uh, different vessels going together and then only branching they are uh, bile duct branches of portal vein and hepatic artery and if we are trying to have a look at uh, lobular uh, structure then we have uh, around the lobule such uh, three eighths of organs of uh, vessels uh, which then pass through sinusoids and here is the site when uh, hepatic artery branch and portal vein branch they are uh, joining together and together they flow in between of these uh, sinusoids. While if we have another look at the same structure, uh, acinar structure, we uh, should consider that uh, as we can see here we have three zones depending on how far away they are from uh, the blood supply and how close they come to central vein and in this aspect we may differentiate three zones. Uh, first zone which is also seen here maybe for some of you better seen but for some of us it's, it could uh, seem a little bit strange to look at the structure is an asinus. In this case three eights are here here is the branch of our uh, uh, here is where our artery is flowing and around this artery we have a zone of hepatocyte which is better supplied with blood. Second zone is less supplied and third one is considered to be microcirculatory periphery and here is the central vein. Similar is here and it is the same here where our blood finally flows to. Uh, why it is so important? Because uh, we know that there are lots of functions in the liver but uh, these functions are compartmental, compartmentalized, means uh, not everything is performed in the same manner by all of the hepatocytes. For example, uh, in zone 3, which is again, if we go, come back here, is close to central vein and far away from the pure fresh blood supply, let's say. In zone 3, we have such processes like glycolysis, synthesis of glycogen, lipogenesis, 
Uh, removal of ammonia from blood by glutamine, very important point, uh, as compared to zone 1, where in the same aspect we remove ammonia not by glutamine formation, as other organs also may do, but very unique one, synthesis of urea, which is happening in zone 1. That's the main idea why we try to differentiate, no, no why authors differentiate uh, zones. It is because these hepatocytes, morphologically being quite the same or similar, but they perform slightly different function. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, get a closer look at the liver cells. I mentioned that we have sinusoids here, but let us now have a closer look at these sinusoids, and we see here that within sinusoids we have so-called fenestrated uh, endothelium. It means that there are windows, fenestra, within the endothelial cells, allowing lots of substances to easily cross the uh, vessels, the capillaries here, but they are very special capillaries. Why it's so important? Because all the organs, all the organs that we mentioned in portal system, they had to uh, provide their not that pure blood, not toxified, detoxified blood yet to liver. So it should be able to uptake, including every other uh, substance, including drugs, so that we need large fenestra, so that the uptake is allowed. Here are those fenestra. This is the uh, uh, hepatocyte actually, which is then uptaking the required uh, nutrients from here. These uh, nice structures are, are microvilli, which are allowing for parenchymal, means hepatocyte cell, for this uptake. Uh, as well as we have one another cell, which is quite commonly uh, uh, in recent years especially, not now probably, now if this cell becomes one of the most important cells for uh, pathophysiologists as well as clinicians, etc. because this is the one who will be later on uh, be considered as a cell uh, playing central role in fibrogenesis and in cirrhosis. It is marked here as IC, means ETO cell, named after the author, otherwise quite commonly cited and known as a stellate cell. And within this stellate cell we see uh, these lipid droplets and it shows that normally ETO cell is a cell for accumulation of lipids and uh, we store there within these lipid droplets vitamin A. Uh, of course we may ask ourselves the same question do we need specific separate cell for storing vitamin A? Uh, I think I can leave you with a question, not with the answer, but actually it appears that we have such cells, but important role of these cells we'll see later on when they transform into quite another types of cell. On uh, future slides we cover some uh, known functions of liver. Uh, there are lots of them and they are classified here as metabolic functions and specific functions. Of course this is uh, some formal subclassification. Of course liver is the main source of production of all albumins, all albumins, uh, most of globulins as well as carbohydrates, bile acids, etc. etc. Everything is given here. I don't think we should stay here since this is known for physiology. Uh, and let us move to uh, liver disorders and etiology of liver diseases. <coughs> um, again, this is quite uncommon to classify uh, disorders of an organ in this way, but uh, we do that because some of the etiological factors are quite specific for liver and uh, they include viral hepatitis with lots of layers A, B, C, D and G, and we'll see here and hereafter lots of times that it's very common for uh, 
scientists who try to describe problems by these letters A, B, C, D, E, G, etc. Probably they think that if we put some letters in some order, we create some rule in this uh, very complicated world. Anyway, uh, viral hepatitis, A, B, C, D, E, G, F, if you wish, etc. Alcoholic liver disease, toxins, dystrophies, so-called cirrhosis, infection, cholelychiasis, cholestasis, disorders of liver blood circulation tumor, all are uh, hepatic. While we might have also other causes uh, which are coming outside of the body and we might consider in this aspect that they are, they are secondary uh, causes of liver failure once we have some other problem like shocks, like uh, heart failure, hypoxia of any other uh, origin, kidney dysfunction, hypovitaminosis, etc., including metastatic liver disease. While this tumor was initially hepatic, like hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, there are again mnemonics in order to remember this, like A in this aspect for acute liver failure. A could stand for acetaminophen, hepatitis A, autoimmune hepatitis. Alcohol is also with A, but it is not here. Uh, B stands for hepatitis B, C for cryptogenic or for hepatitis C. Uh, D stands for hepatitis D and drugs. E it's difficult to consider what is E. It could be, but in turn, it could be hepatitis E as well. And esoteric causes like Wilson's disease, but Chiari syndrome, which, has, which are rare, that's why considered so-called esoteric. And F4 fatty infiltration, which uh, could be found in the mentioned syndromes. And pathophysiologically, we may classify uh, hepatic failure depending on uh, lots of different factors, including the uh, etiology that we already discussed, hepatic and extrahepatic causes, as well as could be absolute or relative, not common classification, of course, but we may imagine that some functions are maintained while the others are absent, or if everything is uh, impaired sometimes, that could be considered as absolute. Or it could be total and partial, primary versus secondary. Important classification that we identified here is shown in yellow, that is hepatocellular. If the main sites comprising about uh, two-thirds of uh, hepatic cells, uh, hepatocytes. If they are damaged, we have hepatocellular hepatic failure, shunt failure when the blood flow uh, is impaired in such a way that some amount of blood uh, is not entering the liver by through bypass, so-called better, if we call it bypass, hepatic failure, enters systemic blood circulation. And third one is cholestatic, when initially hepatocytes themselves are normal, but eventually stasis of the bile, cholestatic, impairs other functions of the organ. Um, it's very important to keep in mind and remember that the liver is also organ not only for those usual metabolic problems, but also it is an organ where we have uh, metabolism of different drugs. And in this aspect it's important to be able to predict sometimes the reaction of the body to uh, given uh, drug. Uh, in this aspect, it's important that some uh, drug reactions are really predictable and we know that if we increase the dosage of given drug, we might have uh, to predict it level some damage in the liver. Acetaminophen is a good example of uh, this predictable hepatotoxin. If we have higher doses of this drug, we predictably means we know that we'll have that uh, liver damage. While some other drugs, uh, we know they, they could, but we can't predict they, uh, would they cause such a damage in given patient, at least now, uh, because maybe we do not know enough 
about his polymorphisms, about his specific uh, uh, genetic machinery that will uh, direct this drug to this or that type of metabolic reaction. So that's why some of them, this reaction, are considered to be hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, in, in this case, like in penitoin, we know that there is hypersensitive reaction to that drug. But some other issues are called metabolic idiosyncratic, in which it is not due to hypersensitivity reaction. It's a, it is just causing hepatotoxic effect, and dosage is less important in that case. Um, well, we mentioned acute, but for liver failure, sometimes this term is very common to be applied. Nonetheless, some authors argue that this is not a very accurate term, but uh, it is very uh, much used for liver. Fulminant failure means that it is very acute, uh, and uh, it means also sometimes that uh, it, uh, despite the fact that it is potentially reversible, it also means that it is uh, covering all the liver and it covers it uh, at once. And a good example of this uh, could be considered, especially in uh, developed countries, the mentioned above uh, drug. Hopefully you recognize that this is that acetaminophen, which is so commonly used for um, as a painkiller, and especially if it is combined with alcohol, it results in serious destruction of hepatocytes, serious damage to hepatocytes with uh, such a morphological picture as we see here. And uh, there is such subdivision. If we have signs of encephalopathy before eight weeks uh, and uh, after the initial symptoms, we consider that this was fulminant liver failure, so very fast. If later, up to 26 weeks, it is sometimes considered a sub liver failure, but altogether there is no serious difference, pathogenetic difference in between them, so that they are simply considered as acute liver failure. Uh, one possible explanation for this hepatotoxicity for acetaminophen is given here, that is its metabolite, cytochrome P, uh, 450, and we know that alcohol is uh, potentiating this damaging effect. We know that, that there is also, uh, due to alcohol depletion of the glutathione system, which is very important in detoxification of acetaminophen, etc. Mechanisms are of, the, of these drug-induced damages are uh, quite a lot and different. Uh, okay, let's move to manifestations, and as we mentioned, we have metabolic functions and some other specific functions, so correspondingly we would have different manifestations of liver diseases, including that we would have impaired synthesis of proteins, albumins, enzymes, as well as procoagulants. Uh, we just covered the issue of uh, hemostasis, so you would recall which uh, procoagulants are produced here in the liver, therefore in liver uh, failure we should expect uh, first of all of course uh, hemorrhagic syndrome but also we know that anticoagulants are also being produced here so different disorders we should expect uh, as well as we would have decreased rate of different reactions related with uh, uh, amino acid metabolism including deamination etc and uh, one function that could be probably specifically emphasized here is the synthesis of urea. I remember when I was a student, I was asked to list functions of the liver from histology exam, and I was trying to go through all of them, but the teacher remained uh, very calm and without any emotion until I came to the point that also one of functions, this was maybe uh, mentioned that 30 or 31st in the order, only that was my idea that urea, not that, it, but now we realize that it is one of the probably most important functions 
unique functions of liver, that is synthesis of urea. And uh, we'll see later on how important it is in terms of hepatic encephalopathy. As well as you see, very important uh, regulation of lipid metabolism, implementation of uh, lipoprotein synthesis, etc. Of course, no role in carbohydrate metabolism and to predict what kind of consequence we would have once a patient has hepatic failure uh, is sometimes confusing since we know that uh, liver is participating and implementing actually most of our gluconeogenesis production of new glucose as well as uh, liver is uh, breaking down glycogen to create new glucose. So these are processes directed to glucose synthesis. Uh, but at the same time, uh, once we have increased level of glucose in the blood, liver is also organ which could uh, utilize that glucose. So that's why in hepatic failure we should predict that after, uh, after having a meal we will have a prolonged period of hyperglycemia. But then, after the utilization of this glucose, we would have hypoglycemia. And uh, that could be one of contributing factors to hepatic encephalopathy and damage to central nervous system since glucose, as we know, is so important for the brain. Uh, all the vitamins are uh, related with the liver, actually, both uh, fat soluble vitamins as well as those which are not, are either stored here or they are activated here, their uh, coenzyme formation happens here. Relation to metals, uh, we can say that there is some metabolism of them, but uh, overall, uh, overall actually it is, and we need to remember that uh, such metals as iron and copper are pretty much related to liver disorders, including some types of liver cirrhosis and hemochromatosis if we accumulate too much uh, of iron, which we partially cover discussing red blood cell system uh, pathology. So if someone has repeatedly, uh, if someone has demand to repeatedly a blood transfusion, that might cause uh, hemochromatosis, especially if someone is not having iron deficiency anemia, but we think that he has, this is another reason for that. And uh, in uh, terms of copper, one, again, maybe uncommon, but interesting sign that always uh, some teachers like to ask about, and even in <coughs> House and the TV show, probably you remember quite commonly, they are excluding or uh, confirming diagnosis of Wilson's disease based on this finding, so-called Kaiser Flacher ring, which is this discoloration. Uh, found here and in this case really after chelation uh, we see that this this coloration is completely uh, absent so show it, it shows that we uh, the doctors were able to properly treat this disorder uh, this is not always seen uh, without a specific slit lamp sometimes you can see it if it is too manifested sometimes no uh, so this is a disorder when copper accumulates in our body. Uh, other disorders that we should have in hepatic failure include problems with desintoxication, those substances without being detoxified enter blood circulation. An important antimicrobial role is related both to uh, IgA production into the bile which is uh, a part of our defense against uh, unwanted uh, microbes, but also we need to remember the decreased phagocytic activity of copper cells, which uh, are probably number two cells after hepatocytes. We have lots of copper cells in, uh, in the liver, probably uh, about 20% of our liver composed of these wonderful macrophages quite very active, participating in many other reactions, as well as uh, another specific uh, function that is quite known is the formation and secretion of bile. And the, uh, probably 
that is the reason why usually when uh, general public is seeing uh, somebody with yellowish discoloration even they know that this should be uh, considered as hepatitis and uh, that is quite common but of course as we'll see later on this is not restricted to uh, liver disease only. Um, I would like also to skip some portion of our future three slides because they are related to signs and symptoms and corresponding explanation is given here. Uh, probably uh, some of these explanations in more details and in future sli slides we'll have and we'll have their discussion better. Here we just would pass them uh, and we can like finalize findings especially in acute liver failure what kind of consequences we might expect uh, in central nervous system function most commonly we expect hepatic encephalopathy uh, sometimes accompanied with cerebral edema and increased intracranial pressure uh, heart we usually have high output state uh, mainly this is because of release of uh, vasodilatory substances by affected liver and that results in correspondingly increased uh, cardiac output. Uh, pancreatitis sometimes uh, follows. Uh, of course this is not necessarily accompanying uh, but it could be there especially in those cases when the reason for that is common like if it is acetaminophen or if it is uh, alcohol it could cause at the same time two organ damages at the same time. Uh, for adrenal gland we usually due to not adequate blood uh, perfusion we might have insufficient glucocorticoid production. Uh, commonly we have kidney failure, uh, pre-renal type, uh, most commonly portal hypertension could be there. About this uh, problem we will talk in more details in chronic uh, liver failure. We might have systemic inflammatory response um, and especially that is one aspect of this is uh, the problem with leukocytes which uh, are having no proper function this is very interesting issue quite uh, requiring specific uh, considerations how and why it happens uh, why, why they are impaired in function we might have bone marrow uh, suppression and uh, if we come to uh, lungs, we could have acute lung injury and uh, dull respiratory distress syndrome and liver itself lots of functions are uh, impaired, some of them are listed due to impaired gluconeogenesis hypoglycemia uh, impaired clearance of lactate will cause lactic acidosis uh, impaired ammonia clearance results in hyperammonemia and uh, coagulopathy due to impaired procoagulant synthesis uh, and to finalize what we mentioned till now and we'll have a break after this slide uh, we should mention that lots of things are impaired in liver failure uh, but we should have some markers in order to conclude especially uh, what happened to the patient and we consider that we can, uh, con we can classify these markers into three groups if we want to know how uh, profound is pr process of current hepatocyte damage right now we should consider levels of aspartate and alanine aminotransferases in the blood uh, we know that these are most important and we mentioned about them even in cell injury when we were just talking about cell uh, damage that these uh, enzymes are leaking into blood plasma and they are very good sensors of our damage to liver there are other markers as well, we will probably talk about them later on, other enzymes. Um, the other aspect of liver damage is not just the amount of cells that are being destroyed right now, but we should also conclude about how many normal working hepatocytes we have. And therefore we need to consider 
uh, other markers, including that prothrombin. Correspondingly, prothrombin time is prolonged. Uh, hopefully, you remember why specifically PT is uh, prolonged, despite the fact that lots of other factors are being produced by the liver. Um, just keep in mind that if we want to assess the function of hepatocytes and the uh, amount of those that are surviving, this is very uh, sensitive. Compared to many others, like albumins also are talking about the same issue, but this is more sensitive. And uh, lastly, we may uh, listen to the, our uh, general public and if they suggest that bilirubin is also important, yeah, we may measure level of bilirubin in, in blood and we, uh, depending on is it direct or indirect bilirubin, we will also conclude, since we are very smart, uh, where, especially in the liver, in hepatocyte, where is the problem. Um, I think we will stop here, uh, we'll have a break and then we'll continue. Uh, stay with us.